Congressman Vern Buchanan pulled his largest town hall crowd over the weekend, and rising tensions made way for some bigger questions about the town hall format. Over 1,700 people gathered at the Van Wezel, with another 800 waiting in line outside. The congressman fielded questions from the crowd for over an hour on topics ranging from health care and social security to climate change and gun control. The crowd was vocal, as you can hear now, with cheers from Buchanan's supporters and booing and shouting from some of his critics. This meeting comes only weeks after Florida Senator Marco Rubio announced that he would not be participating in any town halls because of hecklers and screaming activists. All right, so it is clear from Saturday's turnout that there is a huge demand for these forums. Mm -hmm. Should they be mandatory for elected officials, or are they just basically pep rallies? Yes. If you're going to vote for somebody, you have a right to ask them questions. I've covered these for years, Byrne Buchanan's town hall meetings, and they were never out of order or anything. People just had questions to ask. They got their questions answered, and they were happy. But if you're not willing to, pe ask pe to answer people's questions, even if it gets uncomfortable, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't hold the office. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, you can't just say you aren't going to interact with the people who put you in office. They, they put you there because they want you to represent them. How are you going to know what they feel and what they want if you're not having town halls? And what their needs are. Yeah. So you owe it to the people to have those meetings. Absolutely. I've been, and probably this is the first time the word hot or hot topic has been associated with Vern Buchanan. <laughs> <laughs> so that, is, that tells you, <laughs> that tells you something's going on. They have to ride this wave. They have to ride this wave. Mm -hmm. What is Rubio scared of? He's well, scared of uh, really, really mm -hmm. hearing. You know, so they're going to get rambunctious. They're going to get noisy. We put up with this in the theater a great deal. People mm -hmm. need to voice what they're thinking and feeling. We're in a very divisive, excited mm -hmm. time where people ne are demanding to be heard. They're in the listening position. They have to listen. And, and it's like you saying, well, I'm not going to put anything controversial on controversial on stage. On stage. Or I'm not going to listen to negative reaction to what I do, or mm -hmm. I'm not going to listen to any kinds of reaction to what I do. I mean, yeah, I think everyone needs feedback, regardless of what you know, your position yes. is. They have been part of whipping the country into the state it's in right now. They need to be part of dealing with the consequences of it. And one of those consequences is that they must come to the town halls and suffer the abuse <laughs> for the storm they have whipped up. <laughs> they have whipped up this craziness, and they need to, they need to take up responsibility for it. And I'm disappointed that Rubio is a little cowardly about this. He should be doing it. I agree with my I do too. Well, I no matter what, what political side you fall on, um, it is a reminder that you know these elected officials do work for the people that yes. elected them. I or, think we forget yeah. that. We forget that. They get in office and you know it's almost like the, the high flu, flu in kind of people and then you're here and you can't really speak to them. But no, they're working for us. If we want something, we should be able to go to them and say mm -hmm. it. We should mm -hmm. be writing our congressmen and our congresswomen anytime. Anytime we have a concern. Yeah. Well, and during the sign that and America has a political system where people that can be genuinely engaged and say what they're thinking and feeling, they have to be, they have to take pride in this somehow and weather it. They it's it's, it's very it's positive for the, for the long road yeah, ahead. The, yeah. the number of people it's that want to come. It's not always going to be a hot topic. Absolutely. It's not always going to be a hot right, topic at the right. town halls. And, and it's going to be, we're, we're going we're to get through this, but this is part of it. And not participating then don't be in office. Well, town, yes. hall, town halls uh, in our area were typically <laughs> held in smaller venues. I like they were originally. <laughs> yeah, really this town hall was originally going to be a new college, and when they realized the number of yes. people in advance who were going mm -hmm. to that attend, tells they moved you a great it deal. To, to Van Wezel. And it is, it is good, and I hope something good comes out of it. I hope people continue to, uh, to be politically mm -hmm. charged as long as... But you have to be polite when you ask the questions. Mm -hmm. If you want to get a response, if you're really rude to the person that you're questioning, you're not going to get your See, way. That doesn't work. Exactly I agree with right. that, but I don't think it, that was the issue. I think for sometimes people are really concerned about where the country is going because a lot of things are happening and people don't know what to, to believe anymore. It's baffling. Yeah. So they just mm. want to get it, their questions answered. Yeah, well, no know? change can come without listening. So I hope, uh, yes. I hope everyone's listening to each other.